But I do fun stuff with my son, too. Like, we collab in a little bit. He just recently told me he's into music. <gasps> right? <laughs> so Mama is flattered. I think that's interesting, because he sings a bit. But then he's a basketball kid, and he want to be cool. And then he laugh at me when I sing them little rap songs. He like, Mama, why you got to sing that song like that? You know, but I'm glad that he's getting to it. He, he's also an artist, because I draw myself. I don't know if y'all know that. And my baby is a little artist, too. DOJ drew that picture of my cat, McCavity, right there on the wall. You see that? I had to put it up there last season. That look good, right? He got some skills. See, I ain't just being one of those mamas where you just proud of any little thing they do and they scribble it and you just show everybody. But that's actually good artwork. And my baby, you know, he made me this mug right here, too. See, I, I have to, there you go, D-O-J. Y'all gonna look at this, you better look. That's his little face. He used to wear a mohawk, now he got a, he ain't nothing but a head of hair, just a big old afro walking around. So I need a new cup, little David, you hear that? All right, you gonna look at this cup, but this is just for mama right here. My baby made that, so we collabing together. More to come from D-O-J and his mother. What else is coming up is Halloween is almost here. And anybody find their costumes yet? Listen, I'm struggling. Thank God I got this crew to help me figure out what my costume is gonna be. Last week, my friend Walter came out here and he was a whole great. <laughs> I, boy, you wrapped up in all these balloons. What is happening? Y'all, can y'all see this? Grapes. Your grapes, Walter? Yeah. This my little friend, Walter. Can y'all see his face? <laughs> all right. I don't know about you, but I'm curious to see friend's costume today. Let's see what he got. Walter, where you at, babe? What, you, what are you today? You spaghetti? Well, no, no, you, you mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, you want some? Baby, you a true friend. Let me give you a hug. Did you really come out here looking like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You, you know he loves some cooking. Oh, you falling apart. Oh, Jesus. I'm gonna put this in my bowl. Okay, you, you love cooking. bust my uniform, too. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay, okay. He bust his uniform. <laughs> Did you oil it? Did they put some, like, cooking grease on your legs? Yeah, they did. You could Some tell. butter? No, they put olive oil on it. Ain't he sweet? You see how cute he is? I'm proud of you, friend. You look adorable. Okay. Can I go now? Are you... Can you... Where you going? Oh. You uncomfortable? Is it comfortable? It's better than last week. Well, you gonna smile? <laughs> Y'all get one to hit. If you, you, you can do this yourself. It'd be cute, though. You... <laughs> we got backstage footage on how now. you can create this costume. He said, can I go now? Go, baby, just go. <laughs> Jennifer Hudson, show that. <laughs> oh, friend, I love it. We got a great show. We'll be right back. That's a fun. <laughs> Our next guest is a, is a seven-year-old Arthur changing the world with her beautiful afro. Take a look. I love your hair. Thank you. It's an afro. Oh my God. From Brooklyn, New York, please welcome Cassidy Bridges and her mom and dad. for being here. Thank you for Thank having you us. Thank you for having us. Oh my God, first of all, I love your hair. Thank you. It is so pretty. Thank you. 
Can you tell me about the day you recorded your video? So, we wanted to go to Target, mm, yes. but we decided that, but I decided that I wanted to do a photo shoot real quick. So we did. Yeah, so we were actually going to Target. We just needed to pick up a few things. Uh -huh. And Cassidy loves to model. She loves to work from a very young age. Um, so we stopped on the side, and uh, she was shooting, and a girl walked by and said, I love your hair. And Cassidy responded with all the confidence in the world, thank you, it's an afro. Like, I want to <laughs> let you know it's not just here. It's an it's afro. It's an afro. Yes. Yes, that was such a beautiful way to tell her what it was. And, and you exude such confidence. Where does this confidence come from, Mom? Yeah, we're very, very big on foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, like we do affirmations every single day. We want to make sure, especially because Cassidy has always wanted to, you know, to model, to act, to sing yes. from very young. And I feel like when you get out in the world, they'll tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's very important mm -hmm. to give that foundation right. before she goes out there so she knows who she is yes. no matter what. You've done a wonderful job already <laughs> here. Already. Cassidy, how do you feel when people, do people come up to you a lot on the street? Well, I, well, I feel happy that they want to know about my hair. Mm. And I let them ask questions because if they want to know something about it, they absolutely can. Ah, oh, and you inform <laughs> them too, huh? You're very smart. And how do you feel about like all the people you've inspired from your video and from your afro and from your amazing confidence? Well, I feel happy that they feel like that because not everybody can feel like that at first. You've done really well to make them feel really good about it. Thank you. Now, Cassidy, can you tell me what inspired your lovely book? Well, I couldn't see girls or boys that looked like me, so I had to make my own book. <laughs> you did a wonderful job. Do you know how many girls and boys are going to be able to see themselves from your book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and for us, it's been very full circle. Yes. Because um, we were just going to Target. You know, we didn't expect all of these things to happen and definitely happened so quick. And as of now, it's available in all Targets nationwide. All Targets nationwide. <laughs> this is amazing. You're awesome, young lady. And I hear you want to get an EGOT, huh? Yeah. You are on your way! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You got to see your first Broadway play recently? Yeah. Do you think you'll do Broadway one day? Yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> and you end your day and you start your day with affirmations. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. And I heard you have... Affirmations. Yes, not, not affirmations, affirmations. Ah, can you show us some of them? Yes. We will, right? All right, here you go. Thank you. So, if you guys don't mind, can everybody stand up with us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead, Cassidy. I am smart. I am smart. I am kind. I am kind. I am strong. I am strong. I am capable. I am capable. I am teachable. I am teachable. I am loved. I am loved. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Oh my God. Thank you for that, Cassidy. You just inspired this whole room. Do you understand that? You're a powerful young lady. Thank you. Now. Uh, can I, I, I heard you got a, a, a you got a dog? Mm-hmm. Named Ice Cream? Yeah. Oh my goodness. What kind of ice cream? Can I ask? Well, he's an ice cream sandwich. He's an ice cream sandwich! <laughs> oh, I love that name, Ice Cream. <laughs> you know, I cannot let you leave here without a gift for old Ice Cream from the Happy Place. Can we give Ice Cream a gift? Yeah. All right, bring out the gift for old Ice Cream. Oh. We want to meet Ice Cream. <laughs> Just for your Ice Cream. Oh, wow! So much for being here. Awesome. Thank you for having the world. You. you are truly a star. 
and tell ice cream Jennifer said hi, okay? Okay. All right. To find out more information on Cassidy and her book, thank you. It's an afro. Please visit our website. We'll be right back. You want to tell us? Our next guest is a talented actress who is now trying to save us in the kitchen with her new cookbook. Here we go again. Please welcome Tiffany Thiessen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Okay. What was it like starting out as an actress at 15 years old? Well, let's go in way your back, career. girl. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, it's hard. It's, it's funny. I, I look back in those, those years very fondly, actually. I really do. I don't have too many horror stories, which is nice. Um, but I started very young. I started doing modeling and commercials um, at about eight or nine. And then I got my big break on TV at that really popular Saturday morning show. Mm -hmm. that, that I watch uh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Still do. Um, oh my, oh my, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you yeah. ever think you would go so far? Yeah. No, I don't think you ever think that. I mm -hmm. mean, would you say that too? Like, I remember you, like I, I used to watch you, you yeah. know, like, you had your big break too. Like you don't think you ever think about that, right. really, especially at a young age. But, but at the same time, you kind of hope for it, and you sort of have envisions of wanting that, right? right. So I right. definitely wanted it for sure. Amazing. Yeah. I always wonder that because you know yeah. we all have our own journeys. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, well, did you envision that that you would come so far yeah. and do so many things? You I know? think right now I'm just extremely. I feel very fortunate and blessed to be able to still do it. Exactly. Because this lady is almost 50, so. <laughs> exactly. 15, 50? I mean, that the fact is that I'm still getting to do this is pretty, that's, for me, really kind of amazing. And I'm really lucky. I so. totally agree with that. And, and tell me, how you met your husband? You met him through your career? Yeah, so he also is in the business. He's an actor as well, also an artist. But we were set up on a blind date, actually. A blind date? A blind date. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But, and how long have Look, you guys we were been so married? Young. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we were so young there. Like super, super young. So blind date, but I knew at the moment after the first date was like five hours. Like for it took a, like a really long first date. I knew I was gonna, I knew it was something different. That is so beautiful. You got good instincts, I see. And you have two children, Harper and Hulk. We have two Hulk. kids. We have an eight-year-old boy, uh -huh. Holt, and a now 13-year-old teenage daughter. Oh, I have a horse in real So you know, the teenage years are, we've stepped into something different. It's different. But then I'm really trying to go back to my own teenage years yes. and really try to reflect, like, I remember this. I do remember <laughs> this. And it won't last forever. It, right? You're right. You're <laughs> right? right. Tell me about this new book of yours. Yes. So um, this is actually my second cookbook. Yes. So I've always been a lover of food. Um, I grew up in a family where all the women would cook all the time, and I was always with my mother and my grandmother and my aunt. And so um, I always found sort of a, a place of, uh, of peace, uh, you know, kind of in the kitchen yes. with, my, with, my, with my loved ones. And, and I love how food connects with people. You know, like we really, to me, like food is like music to some people. It's nostalgic. I like how you put that. It can bring, you know, feelings and past memories and, and really bring people together. So I wanted to do my second cookbook. Um, it kind of got birthed during the, the start of COVID. Um, when we were all very scared to go to the, yes. you know, the grocery store. We didn't know how it was happening, right? And so I wanted to do a book um, really kind of based on food waste. I was really trying to teach my kids about food waste and the importance so of smart. not wasting food and how that impact we have as humans is really big on our climate. And then I thought, okay, well, my mom was actually kind of cooking like this when I was young. Mm -hmm. Not because of climate change, of course, but because of budget. I didn't come from a lot of money. So my mom was always repurposing the chicken that we had on Monday night into enchiladas on Tuesday, and then it would become chicken noodle soup on Wednesday. And, you know, that's just kind of how I grew that up. You know, excellent. a very modest family. That is excellent. So I wanted to create a book based all on leftovers. So this book is basically everything you think you probably have in your fridge or your pantry and repurposing it into something new. And you've been getting amazing, great reviews, like yeah, even Snoop really Dogg good. had the chime in there. I did. So I went to school with Snoop Dogg and he was very sweet to really? my book. Yep. I did. So do you, you think <laughs> you'll do any collaborations soon? Oh, I would love to do food? something with him. A Long Beach thing would be kind of fun. That right? would Both be. Both from LBC. Yeah. I want to taste that food. Yeah. That's for sure. Will that you stick around for a little bit? Of course. I want to learn so much from this amazing book. Well, with Tiffany, we'll be right back. We're back with Tiffany Thiessen. Okay, so 
Halloween is coming up. Halloween is coming. It's right around the corner. You know, when Halloween happens, then it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, the year's over. It's just it's like that. It's over. Why is that so crazy? I don't know. And I can't I keep up with the costumes oh, and all I of this know. stuff. You're big on it. You and we your are pretty big. You know, I never was until I had kids. Oh, see. So it's really the kids that have pushed us into, is this you know. The... Yes, this was us last year. Look at my little son. He was Marky Mark. How cute is that? <laughs> Who comes up with the costumes? That was his idea. He did good. He's good. You know what he's going to be this year? Who? James Bond. Oh. He's the only one that knows what he wants to be. The rest of us are like, what are we going to do? Because now that my daughter's older, we used to kind of do themes, and now it's not really the themes anymore. She's like, I do my own thing. Yeah, I got to go with my yeah, friends. You know. See, that's, yeah. that, that that's teenage, the teen thing. Yep. Teenage it's years. It's the teen thing. So I don't know what we're going to do yet. But he's sold. He knew. Okay. The moment he was done with Halloween last year, he already knew what he was going to be next year. Already? Yeah, he's known for a year. Ooh. Oh, he's a tough cookie. Uh huh. Okay. Well, <laughs> we need to take some tips from y'all. Yeah. And okay, you carve out pumpkins too. Yeah, we definitely do the pumpkin thing. My chickens love pumpkins. So your chickens help with the pumpkins. They love pumpkins. So what most chickens <laughs> love scraps and leftovers as well. So generally, I do this thing where I start the carving of the pumpkin, and then I let the chickens go at it. And sometimes it works in my favor, and then this <laughs> last time it didn't work. I love this. It, yeah. So they can't wait for the next Halloween to roll around, yeah. too. And I usually give them all the leftover, <laughs> I give them all the leftover uh, pumpkins after we're, we're done with them. So, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I want some chickens. I know. Chickens are pumpkins. fun. They're super fun. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and you are so gorgeous, first of all. That's what I say about you. I can't get over your skin. Thank you're you. You're going to need to tell me what you're doing with your skin. I don't know. I got it from my mom. That's <laughs> It's in you. the jeans. It's in the jeans. It's in the jeans. Yeah. Hey, you recently turned 50 or you turned 50? I'm going to be, honey. Don't make me older than I already okay. am. Come on now. I'm going to yes, be 50. Ma'am. I'm going to be 50. I can't believe it. I, I actually think. really can't believe it. I cannot believe I'm going to be turning 50 very soon. How do you feel? I feel great. I actually feel more settled turning 50 than I did in my 40s. Like turning 40 was a bigger deal. Yes. I'm kind of like, ooh, I'm 50. Yes, I'm gonna be 50. It. I still can't Enjoy believe it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The days don't come as easy yeah. as they used to. Yeah. So, what is your focus on this chapter of your life? I think being the best 50 year old I can be. Mm. Like right now, I'm really trying to be good. Not that I haven't been in the past, because health has always been very important. And I mean body health and mental health, right? But I think in my 40s, my time was really for my children, right? right we give right. so much to our kids. My body was given so much to my child. Yes. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. And now, since they're older and they don't need me as much as when they were little, um, it's a little more me time now. Yes. It's about you me. You get to live yeah. your best so, life. You know, I'm just trying to be very healthy about approaching 50 with a good mindset, you know, be happy with the wrinkles that I've earned. Mm -hmm. And I say earned because I think, I, I think I I've earned that. them. I love them. They're from all the tears and laughter, like, you know, yes. both. And yes. so I'm happy about that. So, and I've just, yeah, I've taken my health very seriously. Beautiful way to look at it. I love that so much. Okay, now please tell me, <laughs> what is this plunging into ice? Yeah. Pool, water, what? <laughs> oh my God, just a thought. So I that? recently, uh, I've, always, I've always loved it. So it's called, it's called cold plunging. Cold plunging. Yes, or ice, ba uh, or ice bathing. Um, there's some pretty amazing benefits to it. I know a lot of people think what? I'm crazy. Yes, I, I um, thought of them. Yeah, okay. I, heard, I heard you're not, you're not, you're not a cold person, no, which no. I get. Most people aren't. Um, mm -hmm. But the benefits are pretty amazing. Okay. I've been doing it off and on for a few years because my in-laws are, are in the health world, and so they got us into it um, quite a few years ago. But I wanted to start doing it regularly at home. Uh -huh. Now that I'm approaching 50, again, I wanted to do something really healthy for myself. And so the benefits are pretty amazing. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, the dopamine mood adjuster that happens when you get in one of these and how it lasts all day. I feel like I can climb Mount Everest afterwards. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Um, so I'm pretty addicted to it, I have to say. How often do you do it? Well, I do that one like once a week with ice and then I'm able to do one of those plunges. It's actually called the plunge where it stays cold all the time and that one stays on my deck and I do it pretty much every other day. Every other day? I do. I don't know about that. You gonna try it with me? No, ma'am, I'm not. I'm like, <laughs> but I no? wish you well, and I would love to see you again when you come back and see me. Okay. Yeah, oh my God. Maybe, maybe next time. Okay. I'll maybe. give it a try. Maybe we'll just do our feet next time. I give you one toe. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. Make sure y'all check it out. I can't
can't wait to try some of your new leftover recipes. So here we go again. Woo, we'll be right back. We're gonna have to talk about the rest now. Anybody else ever not always sure how to behave at fancy things? We're here to help is etiquette coach to the stars, Micah Meyer. Come on now. Okay, Micah, I'm nervous already. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm nervous already. I'm, no. <laughs> I'm curious to learn all of these things. Good. What is etiquette? And how did you get into it? Do you know, etiquette is just about being kind and respectful to other people. Mm -hmm. If you think of it like that, it's really simple. And I'm sort of the the etiquette ugly duckling, if you mm. will, where I didn't grow up with formal etiquette. Just a middle class family from Sarasota, Florida, and I, I didn't even touch my first piece of silver until I was an adult. So you can learn this. It's, it's a misconception that, that you have to be born with it, right? Right. And, uh, and I went to London for work, and I was so insecure. I had no idea which fork and knife, and it was actually my boyfriend, now mm. husband, thankfully, oh, at the time. Oh, now Yep, thank you. Okay, thankfully. <laughs> and he told me, which is the last thing you want to hear, he said, you need an etiquette class, which is, can you imagine your boyfriend no, saying that? No, that's not like, ooh. I know, I know, I married him. I married. But <laughs> it, and in that moment, it, he was trying to help me. And I took this class and I became so confident. And once I took this class, I could not wait to take more classes because you can't believe what you learn in an etiquette class. Yes, what made you want to turn it into a career? How did that happen? Well, you know, I started, I, I went to, I trained in London okay. under a, f a former member of the Queen of England's household staff. So oh. it was the, yep, it was a... Well, this is serious. And then I went to Swiss finishing school and I started inviting all my friends. And they were learning and then they would invite somebody and they'd bring somebody. And I was like, wait a second, this is a business idea here. And then I moved back to New Very York smart. where we started the Plaza Hotel Finishing Program and wrote a few books and became the Downton Abbey official partner for the tour, and here I am. Oh my God. So we're, you know, thank that you. That is thank you. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And, and so where did you start with your etiquette? Where do, where, where do you start with it? Where did the whole idea yeah. of etiquette come from? You know, etiquette is actually, my, my daughter, she thinks she started etiquette. This little girl, she's so <laughs> funny. She's, she's the manners police in my house. Uh -huh. um, but you know, I think that Really, oh, that's Valentina. Oh. Yeah, that, we're at the plaza. But, you know, I think um, it's etiquette is thousands of years old. So what we know traditionally is etiquette, you actually, I mean, the, the handshake, for example, okay. is, was, was invented in the fifth century BC. And they used to, sh to show that they didn't have a weapon, they would shake hands. That's where they go. Yes. Exactly. And so, for example, do you want to learn a little etiquette? I want to learn handshake? everything okay. I can. Okay, so a handshake, we would be standing. You, want to stand? we, yep. oh, yes. you always stand. We want to learn, hands. right, y'all? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, so it is two pumps for business. Two, two so pumps two for pumps. business. So one, two, uh -huh. or three socially. One, two, three. And be oh. careful of doing this or this because this means I'm in charge of you. So, yes. So that you is? want to be careful who you do that to. Be careful. So it, it's a political move, too. You see a lot of politicians doing that. It's like, I'm winning. I'm in charge of you. So you have to be careful of what you use and when, and when you use it. But that's just one. <laughs> mm, OK. That was amazing, right? We're learning already. Does etiquette ever change depending on where you go or, you know, era, time? Etiquette is constantly changing. So I'm, I will say I'm not your grandma's etiquette teacher, obviously. Um, but I think that, you know, it's, it's always evolving. I, I wouldn't teach something from 50 years ago. It just doesn't work like that. Think right. about gender and etiquette and all these things are constantly evolving. So we have to evolve with it. Mm. And etiquette, you practice the etiquette of the country or culture you're in. So to, to fit in and show respect. Yeah. So it, it's, it really does vary. I got so many questions. Can you stick around? Because I need a little more yeah. tips I love it. and tricks. We want to learn some more. Well, and Michael, when we come back, we're back with etiquette expert Micah Meyer, and she's going to take me through a manners boot camp. So, Micah, can you set it up for me, the scene? 
Okay, so I'm taking you through a dinner party. So from the first moment we arrive to sitting at dinner, I'm going to take you through some challenges. Okay. You up for it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the first one. We arrive, but we've been invited to a dinner party at 7 p.m. Okay. Do we arrive at 6.50, to be early, 7 or 7.10? Oof. What y'all think? 6.50? Is that wrong? 6.50 or 7? Oh. Six, okay, so 6.50. Actually, that's early, and we don't want to show up early to a dinner party. Yes, to a business meeting, not to a dinner party. Because your host is doing all the last minute things. Okay. And you know, you hear ding dong, and you're like, oh, I'm not ready. So you want to avoid that. So 7 to 7.10. 7 to 7.10. 7 to 7.10 is the right time. Yes. Okay. Write it down. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Yes. Next one. So you're invited to a dinner party. What do you bring if the host says, please don't bring anything? Do you A, still bring something, or B, you listen to them and you don't bring anything? Well, I feel like it's good manners to come with something. I don't want to come empty-handed. You are right. You are right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. you all, you never want to show up empty handed, okay. right? You want to thank the host for, yes. for you know, showing gratitude to, to being invited. So now we're going to move over to some uh, okay. appetizers. Okay. So please come I'm over here. To here. Learn. Yes, and yep. we are next over here at this beautiful spread. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? How would you go ahead and take, you can take anything you'd like. Show me please what you would do to help yourself. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, I, I think it would be appropriate to grab a napkin. Oh, but it's cloth, so I don't want to mess it up because it's so pretty. Hold the line, and then this look like I should have it. Uh, at least maybe do something like this. That was actually perfect. That was actually perfect. That was beautiful. Yes, that was okay. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. The, the correct etiquette. Oh, I forgot. I didn't see the plate. So the correct etiquette is to never just grab and, and go. Okay. If you want to take a napkin or a plate, you take something off of the communal food and then you put it in your mouth and only one at a time. So you are perfect. Oh, so I did okay. that. Okay. So next, please, I'd like to invite you to grab a drink, please. Yes. Whatever you'd like. Okay, so let me say this, Micah. Yeah. I get confused here because I don't drink yep. and I see the different styles of glasses. Which one is appropriate to pick up if I'm just drinking a little water or something? It is completely up to you. So there's no, there's n there's no glass you have to pick up. If you're at a little bit more of an elegant affair, I still would probably gla grab a glass with Yeah, this makes me feel real grown. Hold on. There you go. Okay. When I get this, I'll be feeling so grown. You know? <laughs> okay, okay. And do I feel it? Okay, because I noticed these, they only fill it up so far. All right. So let me show you this. So with whenever you have a glass that has a stem, you want to hold it by the stem. Mm. And the reason is that you don't want to have fingerprints oh. and you don't want to heat whatever liquid's in there. So just like that, perfect. Okay. And then you actually would just fill it. You could fill it up to here if it's not wine, if it's wine, just to this line here. So you're perfect, you're perfect. Just okay. like that. Now the other thing. <laughs> so. We are red lip girls, right? Yes. Which I love it, I love it. So to avoid that lip ring, we want to drink from the same point of the glass every single time to avoid the lip ring. So it's not all the way exactly. around Exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. okay. And next, may I please invite you over to eat for dinner? Yes, ma'am. Please have a seat. All right. Now, is it okay if I invite a friend? I would love to meet All right. your friends. See, I decided to bring one of my boys. This, <gasps> this is what gave me the idea to do the etiquette class. This is Jeremiah. <gasps> Hello, Jeremiah. How you doing? Hi, lovely to meet you. Nice Welcome. I have to tell you, Mike, I have my son and like seven of his cousins and friends, and this is one of them. And they're young men, and they're going out to a lot of places now. And so I was like, it's time for an etiquette yeah. class, guys. So this is where this idea came from. So we want to learn together. I love it. Well, welcome, Jeremiah. Well, OK, so I'll ask you both. What would you think, the moment you sit down, what's the first thing you might do at a table? Put the napkin put on the, your lap. Yes. Did it? Yes. yes. Amazing. So at a restaurant, the first thing you do is put that napkin in your lap. Interestingly, at a private home, you wait until the host puts it in their, nap their lap, and then you follow suit. Mm. But here is the best part about napkin etiquette. No matter how it's on the table, there's an actual way it goes in your lap. You fold it in half, like this. Mm. Okay. And then you take this crease, and you put this crease to your belly button. Mm. And the reason is because then we can open it, and then we put our stains in here, 
and then close it so all the stains in the inside, so you don't stay see. to the inside of the napkin. So you always have a beautiful presentation on your lap. Okay, before you go, I got a few more questions. I would love that. Okay, I noticed I'm, I'm a, a, a sparkling water drinker, right? And I noticed when you order the sparkling water at the restaurant, they always take it away. Why? They leave the champagne, they leave the wine, they leave whatever you drinking. Where are you going with my sparkling water? I, and why do you only fill it up a little bit? No, give me more. Why I, I agree, I agree. You know, I mean, that's not correct service etiquette. I mean, they really should leave it the whole meal to the dessert. Um, but if so, if they try to take it, you could just say, oh, I'm still working on that, thank you. Uh, but okay. there, that's, yeah. And then if you ever, if they're ever pouring you more, say, because you don't drink and they're trying to pour you wine, you say, oh no, I'm, I'm fine, thank you very much. So just the universal si signal for no more is just that. No more. Perfect. No more. Okay. Where are crystal lights, you got it? Nah. Okay, so another thing is, you know we all have our own dietary needs, right? Okay, and I tend to take my crystal light or every blue moon my own seasoning <laughs> to an event. Is there a proper way to pull it out? Do I just squeeze it in there and hide it? You know? I, you know, I, I don't know I've ever taught crystal light etiquette, um, but this is interesting, this is interesting. I think I would just do it very nonchalantly. I think I would just take my little, is it a little packet? Yeah, it's just I a little. I think I would just do that. And, and then it. and then put it straight back. Don't draw attention to it and, and enjoy that crystal light. I mean, there you okay. go. Should I offer it to everyone else? I'll share some with you guys. Thank you so much, Michael, for being here. Did you learn something? You did, excellent, thank you. Thank you. You can discover more etiquette tips and tricks by Michael on, my, on her social media. Thanks again for being here and giving me such amazing tips and tricks and advice. Me and my boys, we will apply it. Good. We would love to see Good. you again. Tell them, Jeremiah, bye. Bye. All right, we'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.